So, hi, my name is Edward. I'm the founder and CEO of QuasarDB. QuasarDB is a high-speed time series database. Uh, everyone is familiar with the term time series database. Um, no, maybe not. So time series basically data indexed by time and time series database is database optimized for this kind of data. Um, the technology was started around nine years ago. Uh, I was working in financial markets in 2008, perfect timing. And uh, basically, we, um, I hate databases. I think, find them very annoying and I hate SQL. I think it's the worst language in the world. So I was cursed by the gods and they said, so your company is going to be a database company. Um, the goal is on the left, you have the data and the right, you have the queries. Uh, the query is the question you have. If you're a hedge fund today, you assimilate around one terabyte of the new data per day. Uh, you may want to keep that forever and query that in real time. That's a promise we give you. Store everything forever, query that in real time. Um, I'm with the product today is 2.7, and I want to talk to you about what we're going to do, which is very exciting. So we're very good at two things. Ingest a lot of data transactionally in real time, and compress that on disk, because if you have one terabyte of data per day, you probably don't want to use one terabyte of disk per day. And the second thing we're very good is we can pretend we're a normal database. So we combine in two products, an in-memory analytics uh, real-time database and a distributed file storage system. And you have the impression that all the data is accessible in real time. And we even give you a better SQL with some extension for time series, because remember, I hate SQL. Um, now the question is, you're a quant, you're an analyst, and you have a new ID. Uh, your new ID is, um, I want to run a very specific computation. I want, for example, to compute the value of a stocks, and I want to compound, I don't know, the number of followers of Twitter, and if I have chicken for breakfast, uh, I want to divide the value by two. So the guy comes and they say, we want this kind of value that detects that I have chicken for breakfast, and we say we're not going to implement that in database. So they say, fine, so I write a program and get the data from the database. But the problem is, what if it's 10 terabytes of data? It's not going to fit in your program. So the normal thing you do when your database, you open up the data so your programmers, the users, can run their own code in the database. But as a database maker, it's something you don't want to do because basically you're enabling your users to destroy everything. So <laughs> what we did is, Usually a database enables you to do what we call store procedure. So you have the SQL query, you can write some extended queries, store that in database, have it run, optimized. What we've done is, while most of our users are not so good at SQL, and they are mostly Python users, maybe R, and so what about we say, well, you take your Python code and run it directly in the database, so you have absolutely nothing to do, just take your code, run it in the database. So we did that, we mind saying, well, we also don't want to compromise the performance because that's what they bought us for, right? So we constrained a little bit. You can basically write your own aggregation function in Python. An aggregation function is something like, I want the sum of my values. You write that in Python and we take care of the distribution, we take care of the aggregation, and we give you the result, and you can call that into uh, your SQL query magically. Uh, why did you choose Python? Uh, there is no dogma or ID behind it except that I think 80% of our customers are Python shops, and so that's a strong indicator. Then you have licensing questions, can we embed the language? Then you have, it's low on the list from the point of view of our customers, but it's very high on the list from the point of view of us, which is, is it technically possible? Is it going to deliver something satisfactory? And the answer is yes. The core of the database, if you're interested, is written in C++, so that we don't really have constraints, uh, but still. Then the, the, the idea is always is the vision we have at Quasar is really to make no compromise in terms of performance, store everything you want, never throw away data, do queries in real time. And we believe that by giving you the possibility to also run your code in the database, we give you an next level in terms of experience. And we also want to have NumPy and Pandas, very popular libraries for Python users to be used. You can register on the beta program. Uh, by this address, and uh, we're going to have an event early November for the 3.0 launch, and I'll be in Chicago next week if you want to meet me. Otherwise, I'm in New York. Thank, Thank you. you. Very good. So now, oh. Probably doesn't matter. Do we have a question or two? 
over there. Turn up the mic in a second. So I have a question. Why you hate that SQL? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe in a previous, actually, um, I'm a system programmer, kernel programmer. So I come from a field of writing C++ and device drivers. Um, so of course, SQL is basically at the other side of the scale in terms of languages. Um, I think for time series data, SQL is a bit heavy. I however think that it's not smart today to try to reinvent a query language that is there. It has some very nice properties, but has complexity of your question grows, the query grows as well. It's hard to maintain and the thing, there is the false idea that everyone is good at SQL. So you have to be very careful. What I've seen when I was working in investment banking is that, yeah, actually, yeah, SQL is not that well understood. So it's a bit of double-edged sword. That's my opinion. But of course, I was joking a bit when I say I hate SQL. That's just, uh, just to be clear. <laughs> My question is, how different is your system from KDB's current system that's available for a special time series in database program? Um, so in terms of performance, you know that KDB prevents by licensing to comment on the performance relative to others. So first you're using SQL, then we actually store the data and give you transparent with distribution. We distribute it, which KDB is not. And um, yeah, the integrate you can run Python the database and it actually works. All right, that's almost exactly on time. Thank you so Thank much. You.